All right, let's get to the very patient Ken Gutman. He is the superintendent of the Wald Lake Consolidated School District with his fake background. And uh, hi, hi, Ken. How are you? I'm doing great, Dave. How are you? Good. So uh, any comment on any of our news today? You probably don't want to dip your toe in that pond, but uh, that's what we're doing here every day. Yeah, I'm going to stick to education, if that's all right with you. Uh, I, I think everything we do right now is subject to scrutiny, both both in uh, our national and our state leaders. Ultimately, what I really believe, and I don't think I'm naive in saying, I think most people are doing what they think is best for most people. And uh, I can tell you in the schools, that's our attitude, too. We're going to do the very best we can under the circumstances and try to take care of everyone. Well, and, you know, that's so well said. And that's what that's why I love doing this show, because you, the other people that we have on in a regular basis, uh, you just call it the way you see it, and I appreciate that. And and really, that it's just common sense. You cannot write a set of guidelines and rules to cover every situation, and uh, no matter where you weigh in politically, it just it's impossible. You know, it doesn't matter who is writing the rules; it's going to be very difficult to interpret. Uh, every situation and try and document it and write it in legalese. So I don't envy what the governor is having to go through um, right now. And and then you're on the other side of it. As a superintendent of one of our school districts, you need to interpret all this and apply it to your school. How's that going? So we'll err on the side of children and we'll make the best decision we can with the information we have at the time. And the information continues to change. As each order comes through, we interpret it, we react, and we immediately put things in place that help kids. And so uh, we're going to continue to do our best for all of our children. So um, we talked before we went on the air. You say you're working on a thing called continuity of learning. Can you explain to we lay people what that is and what you're up to? You bet. So it's part of the governor's executive order. Each district, each school district, and I, maybe it comes from Michigan Department of Education. Regardless, each school district is responsible for what's called a continuity of learning plan that must be approved by the intermediate school district, in our case, Oakland Schools. And so that really addresses such issues as how we'll meet the needs of learners, what we'll do specifically uh, to, to meet their needs. And so we're going to uh, submit ours in the next day or so. We want to make sure we have good collaboration with our educators and others, and that we'll submit that continuity of learning plan. In Wild Lake, we've been doing enrichment for three weeks and waiting to see, get, get some direction from the state. We have that direction now. And so uh, our next step is we'll do a couple days of professional development with our teachers this Thursday, this Friday, and we'll be up and running with new instruction, new curriculum next Monday. So we feel like we adopted uh, a pretty good set of guidelines early on. We have more information now, we're prepared to move forward in a collaborative way to continue to educate our children. So help, help me understand, Ken Gutman, Superintendent uh, Wald Lake Consolidated Schools, in your normal environment, is curriculum designed locally by the local school board and the local community uh, to fit within some guidelines? Is that what typically happens? Well, there's a long story behind that, but certainly there are local interpretations of curriculum, yes. Uh, a lot of what we do does subscribe to somewhat of a state curriculum as well, because we are measured, our students are measured by state and national tests. All right. So, so if, I'm sorry, go ahead. Dave. No, 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 no. Forgive me for interrupting. So if that's the case in normal times, this continuity of learning that the Department of Education or whatever state agency asks you to do it, put together, this is your new game plan going forward. How is this different than uh, the way it was working in the past? Well, so we'll continue to teach much of the same curriculum, but we have to find a way to do it that makes sense. You can't do the t same types of things you do in a classroom. Picture a kindergarten classroom sitting on the rug, doing uh, activities with children there, hands-on activities, more kinesthetic types of learning. You can't do that as well virtually. So we're finding a way to adapt that and look at some of the essential learning, some of the essential, uh, some of our power standards, some of the big learnings that we think we can accomplish between now and the end of the year. It's, it's a lot easier, although not easy to teach in a classroom, far from easy. But it's even more complicated by trying to do that online, hoping you can reach each of your learners, but not necessarily being able to read their faces uh, the same way as you would in the same classroom. So, Ken Gutman, you're writing the syllabus, if you will, the game plan for how you're going to educate students against the state standards, given the technical limitations that you have in not being in the classroom. It's the uh, quote-unquote educational new normal. Do I, do I have that right? <laughs> I think you said it much better than I did. <laughs> well, so does every school district need to figure that out for themselves or 
is there uh, is there collaboration, some structure, so you can try to figure it out together? Yes and yes. Some choose to, to go it alone. We continue to talk to uh, superintendents. I do from, from the Tri-County area and across the state. I know in Oakland County, we have a really collaborative group of superintendents. And so we do talk about what we're doing. What complicates things is we all have different spring breaks. So some districts were able to get ahead during their, because their spring break was a week earlier. Others had to, to wait a little bit, but, but our collaboration is strong. And certainly we all uh, cater or, or, or uh, tailor our plans to our local community. But, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of collaboration. I think it's one thing that we've uncovered throughout this pandemic is that um, our, our educational leaders in the county continue to be good teammates. So uh, one of your colleagues, uh, Pat Watson at Bloomfield Hills Schools, he, he gave us a really good quote, and uh, we keep going back to it. And he said, hope is a good one. Hope is not a plan. Hope is not a plan. So a couple of things you know. School is going to be closed. The physical school is going to be closed for the balance of the year. I, I assume you have a plan for that. We do. We do. We're going to continue teaching for the remainder of the year. We're going to work closely with our educators and our community to make sure that we do the very best we can for each and every one of our children. And uh, we're working on our, our calendar and other issues for next year to try to make sure that we can make up for any potential lost learning. Uh, certainly there is a plan. And by the way, a shout out to Pat Watson. Every day he tweets a quote in the morning and they're usually pretty inspirational. Well, I got, well, let's go find them. Tyler, let's go find Pat Watson's quote for today. We'll take a look right now and see if we can find it. Uh, okay, so hope is not a plan. I, I assume you have a plan for the summer as well. We do, but but it will really be largely dependent on when people are allowed to get together again and what's determined to be essential. So we have passed, thank, thanks to a fantastic support of Wild Lake Schools community, a $316 million bond last year. Well, we're supposed to begin construction shortly. And so our summer may look very different should construction workers and others not be deemed essential workers. Um, the plan academically we're working on and, and we feel will be sound. The plan in terms of our physical environment, it's up in the air. And, and then I, he, I really even hate to ask this, but we have to because we have to have a plan. For goodness sakes, I mean, it is possible that uh, we are going to see another peak in the fall. We hope not. I hope we come out of May. I hope May 2nd we're all out at the parks and on the beaches and back at work. Um, that may not be reality. And even when we do get back and these orders are lifted, we, we may see another round. Are you working on plans for that? Are our schools trying to think, oh, my goodness, in the worst-case scenario, school can't open up in the fall or we got to shut it down again? Are there plans that you're working on in those scenarios? You bet. Uh, you know, you can hope for the best, but plan for the worst, right? So yeah. hope is not a, a plan, plan for the worst. And we're going to. You know, the, the reality is if we're doing this again in the fall, if we're doing virtual learning again, we'll be better at it and we'll continue to adapt and get stronger. We didn't have any idea this was coming. We couldn't have planned for it earlier. But now that we know it's possible, we need to make sure that we take care of everyone. And that involves a uh, uh, thinking about what happens in the fall should we not be together. And so we'll be better at what we do in August or September if, in fact, that becomes something we have to deal with. And I'm sure in your plan, Ken Gutman, superintendent of the Wald Lake Consolidated Schools, somewhere along there, there's we've learned some good things. There is going to be some new normal, and it doesn't have to be bad uh, from the experiences that we've gone through over the past couple of months. Yeah, you know, some of the – well, we've learned a lot about each other, too, I think. Uh, and, and yeah, it hasn't been face to face, but I have seen more people step up and volunteer and, and, and to, to help and be in contact with people they hadn't spoken with before and offer whatever people need. The good in man and, and, and good in women, we've seen it. We've seen it happen more and more through this crisis. And so I continue to be hopeful that we'll be better for this and that uh, there will be even more lessons of, of good things that happened as we bemoan the fact that we're uh, in our homes still. All right, Ken. Well, I appreciate uh, Ken Gutman, Superintendent Wald Lake Schools. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, just the, the basic reminders, food. Food's still available through the schools if people need a meal? Still delivering ten to 15,000 meals a week and having them available at two of our high schools for the community. 
still making sure those who have technology needs get them. And we still have an info at wlcsd.org email address. We're putting together a frequently asked questions document. And we encourage people to send their emails in, let us know not only what their questions are, but how we can help them and be better partners with them throughout. This. All right. And, you know, listen, I, I want to congratulate you on everything you're doing. And I know you have amazing students in Wald Lake. We'll get a chance to meet them. In the next couple of minutes, we're going to meet some other students from around our coverage area. Uh, Logan in Avondale and then Jack and Sammy in West Bloomfield and Bloomfield Hills and find out about some of the amazing work they're doing. I'm sure you've had, now that things settled down a little bit, an opportunity to see some of the students that have taken this lemon situation and turned it into lemonade. We, we can learn a lot from our children. They tend to find the good in things. And so we have for sure, and I look forward to seeing what, uh, what these fine student leaders from other districts are doing as well. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Anything else, uh, King Gutman? I thank you as always for your time. What a great show you have. You have innovative student leaders. You've got Debbie Binder and Kurt Lawson. You've got a great community and continue the good work. It's a, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Well, thank you very much. And you are still number one in the hit parade in Wald Lake when we're on your Facebook page as we are today. More people watch the show than uh, virtually any other of our partners. So we, uh, we greatly appreciate it. Our pleasure. Wald Lake Schools always shows up. All right. Ken Gutman, Superintendent, Wald Lake Consolidated School District, joining us here on the Megacast.